China has actually been one of the reasons that oil has been so resilient, that it bounced so, so fast from the bottom. Uh, if you look at ship tracking data, you can see just this enormous number of super tankers parked off the, co the coast of uh, China waiting to unload. Now, some of this is a true demand rebound, but n no small amount, although no one appears to know quite how much, is uh, filling storage, uh, either strategic or commercial. Uh, China took a, a great opportunity back when, it, when oil prices were extremely low and able to buy up a lot of oil. And this has helped rebalance the market faster than seemed possible back at the time. So any resurgence in Chinese buying, say, of U.S. oil, obviously would be good from that point of view in terms of providing an extra dollop of demand, at least in the short term. But again, we have to wonder how much of that is real and sustainable and how much of that is a one-off uh, field of storage. Ronald, you were talking earlier about the range-bound trading activity that we've seen in oil. Perhaps the weaker dollar has a lot to do with that. But what do you think is going to be the catalyst for a breakout? The catalyst for a break is going to be probably in the end will be some change in underlying numbers. Either we'll see demand start to turn off again because of COVID-19 or potentially we'll see a, a resumption of production declines in the U.S. Now, one of the things that's made the production numbers out of the U.S. difficult is that a, the U.S. producers, it turns out, were very quick to turn off production, not production declining from natural decline rates, but actually going out and turning off the wells back in April and May, which was natural. The, the, the market was sending a very strong signal, turn off the wells. I mean, you're getting three or five dollars a barrel up in North Dakota back in April and May. Uh, they did that. And no one seems to know precisely how much was turned off. So of this two million barrel a day reduction in U.S. production, some amount of that is uh, an actual decline in production because of the massive uh, cutback in drilling. And some of that was temporary. And those wells are now being turned back on. And so on one hand, we probably have natural decline rates con uh, continue in the U.S. being offset by the return of some wells that have been shut off. What the net number is, no one really knows. Uh, if at some point in the next couple of weeks, and we don't know how long, the uh, return of production of idled wells ceases, in other words, they run out of idled wells, uh, we could see an uncovering of background decline rates that are higher than the market's really ready to price in yet, and that could be very supportive of prices. Uh, on the other hand, and not to get too deep into the weeds, uh, if it turns out the, that the U.S. drillers are going through another surge in efficiency gains, which happened in 2015 and 2016, where you don't need nearly as many rigs running to maintain production, then that could end up being bearish for, for oil prices.